Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the blood pathway through the heart, and I'm gonna go over the structures of the heart model in of itself. So before we begin, first you want to get yourself comfortable with the heart. Situate yourself. The right side is blue. So this is the return, the deoxygenated blood from the system, and the left side is red, and this is the oxygenated part of the heart. So the left, I'm sorry, the right side is all the return from the body, and the left side is from the heart to the body. Now, when you look at the heart, okay, you wanna see the obvious. The number one and number seven, okay, these are oracles. Now, oracles, I call them the heart hats. What this does, this just increases the surface anatomy of the heart. So when you're looking at the structure of the heart, think about a dance. Think about how the blood is returning from the body to the lungs and then out through the heart to the body. So the return flow, it comes through three main veins. One is the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava is return blood from T7 and above. So this is, this is your uh, neck, your head, and your arms. Number 26, this is the inferior vena cava, and this is from T7 and below, like your diaphragm, your viscera, your lower extremities. And 27, this is the coronary sinus. This is the, this drains the blood from the heart in itself, because remember, when you say coronary, you always want to think of, you we'll always think of heart. So there's three main veins that, that drain the heart and the body, and it comes into the right atrium. It goes from the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve, through the right ventricle. The right ventricle contracts and it shunts the blood through this aortic semilunar, I'm sorry, the semilunar valve, which is the pulmonary semilunar valve. Because why is it the pulmonary semilunar valve? Because it's gonna to go to the pulmonary trunk. Now the pulmonary trunk bifurcates and it's gonna to go to the lungs. So you're gonna have, a, you have a right lung and you have a left lung. So 9A is the right pulmonary artery and 9B is the left pulmonary artery. Now, one thing I wanna take note is don't remember the colors because typically throughout the body, the veins are the, drain the blood to the heart, okay? Now, in this case, actually veins, arteries, Arteries pump the blood away from the heart and veins draw the, body, the uh, blood to the heart. This is pumping the, the blood away from the heart, so this is the pulmonary artery. Now remember, it comes to the back here, so these could be tagged anywhere as well. Now it goes to the lungs, because the lungs are the pulmonary circuit, that's where the blood gets oxygenated. So it's gonna return, it's gonna go from the lungs, the oxygenated blood, through the pulmonary vein. Why? Because veins draw the blood to the heart. Remember, arteries draw blood away from the heart. So it's gonna take the oxygenated blood, it's gonna go through the left and right pulmonary veins respectively, and it's gonna drain into the left atrium, through the bicuspid valve, through the left ventricle, and it's gonna get pumped through the aortic semilunar valve. Now, one way to remember is because there's to, there, again, there's semilunar valves, and you got and you got valves in, the, in of itself. You have your tricuspid valve on the right side. You have your bicuspid or mitral valve on the left. The mnemonic is try it before you buy it, or try it right. Now remember, with the semilunar valves, there is one over here and one over here. I always ask, where is it going? This. Remember, this semilunar valve is going to the pulmonary trunk, so this is why it's called the pulmonary semilunar valve. This semilunar valve is going to the aorta, so this is called the aortic semilunar valve. So then it goes to the aortic, uh, aorta, the ascending aorta, this is the aortic arch, and then it bifurcates, actually it splits into three posts, number 13, 14, and 15. Number 13 is the brachiocephalic trunk, Number 14 is the left common carotid artery, and number 15 is the left subclavicle artery, hence the name subclavian, because it can go underneath the clavicle. Now, one way that I always tell my students to remember it is ABCs. A is the aorta, B is the brachiocephalic trunk, 
C is a left common carotid, and S is the left subclavian. Now, yes, off the brachiocephalic trunk, it is going to split, and you're going to have a right common carotid artery and a right subclavian artery, okay? So when you talk about the structure of the heart as well, let's talk about the blood pathway through the heart. And we're gonna start off at the coronary artery. The coronary artery comes off the aorta and it's behind the pulmonary trunk. So you have a left, so you have a coronary artery which branches off, it splits into a left and a right coronary artery. And let's take it easy first. So let's go right. You have the right coronary artery which comes down and it splits off into a marginal branch. Okay, so this is the marginal branch of the right coronary artery, which supplies the blood to the right ventricle. And then it kind of keeps on going and it goes behind the heart, the posterior surface, and you have a branch over here, number 61, which is the posterior interventricular branch. Now, the left coronary artery is very important. A lot of test, a lot of test examiners test on the left coronary artery. Why? because the main branch that comes off the left coronary artery is right here, is the anterior interventricular branch. This supplies blood to the left and right ventricles. Also, this, in a myocardial infarction, this is the most commonly occluded, aka the widowmaker. So if you think about this logically, so if this artery is blocked, again, it supplies blood to the ventricles. So this is why it's called the, the widowmaker. So we have to get to the posterior surface of the heart. So the left coronary artery has this uh, circumflex branch, number 49, which supplies blood to the posterior surface of the heart as well, okay? Which also teams up with the posterior interventricular branch. So that's the artery. So then now we have to think about draining the heart. There's three main veins that drain the heart. One, Okay, so we have the anterior interventricular artery. You have right here called the great cardiac vein. The great cardiac vein, yes, drains the ventricles, comes up, loops around with a circumflex branch, and it pours into the coronary sinus. So that's, a coronary, that's the great cardiac vein. Number 46 here, this is a small cardiac vein. And number Number 60, sorry, number 60, so you have the great cardiac vein, the small cardiac vein, and then you right here, number 60, which teams up with the posterior interventricular artery. Number 60, this is your middle cardiac vein, and keep one thing in mind. Okay, so it's the deoxygenated blood, so it's all gonna pull up to the coronary sinus and drain into the heart through number 58. Now, there's a couple of structures, embryological structures, that are always tested on. One is number 55, and the other one is number 10. Now, number 55, when you're a fetus, fetal circulation, this is the foramenal valley. Now, the foramenal valley helps supply the blood to the, to the atrium as a fetus. Because remember, there's no other type of circulation because you are living off your mother, the placenta. Number 10, this is actually a shunt that goes from the aorta through the pulmonary trunk. So as a fetus, this is the ductus arteriosus. Now what happens when you are born and you take your first breath, these seal. So the foramenal valley becomes a fossil valis and the ductus arteriosus becomes a ligamentum arteriosum. So these two main structures are, these, are less, these two main structures are tested a lot when it comes to lab exams. Okay, so then when we're talking about the structures, the, the structures of the valves, okay? So you got the tricuspid valve and you have the bicuspid valve. Now, you have the cords here. The cords here that attach onto the valve in of itself is the cord tendine. Attaching onto the cord is a papillary muscle. And attaching to the papillary muscle to the heart wall is this rigid, the rigid stuff, which is the trabeculae carnae of the heart. Now there's different muscle layers of the heart. The main ones, the main muscle of the heart that you have to always have to be aware of is the myocardium, okay? So you got the myocardium, the trabeculae carnae, which is like the beams. From the trabeculae carnae, you have the papillary muscle. The papillary muscle attaching to the valves is the corda tendine. And in between the ventricles, we have this septum the interventricular septum. This is a great wall that's a, that 
that divides the ventricles. All right, I hope that helps. Thank you.